Hello everyone! Hey, welcome to another episode of The Front. We finally got this going uh, and I've been behind the scenes making magic happen, so to speak. So uh, thank you so much for taking the time to tune in and join us today for this live leadership lesson with my friend Anthony Alagona. As always, you can check out the website at leadtheteam.net for free sales training, for motivational content, and for leadership tips. So I am going to get right into it today. Thanks for tuning in to Lead the Teams, the front. Yes, that's right. Thank you again for joining me. And joining me on the other line right now live is Mr. Anthony Alagona. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in with me today, Anthony, and, and spend a little bit of time and share some of your knowledge and your leadership tips and information. I really appreciate you asking me, Mike. It's my pleasure. Absolutely. And thank you also, because for those of you out there in live land, uh, this is an experiment with a new software, which it looks really cool, except for that still says Carter Phillips. So I'll, I'll change that while, while we're talking here. I'm going to go to Anthony. What I'd like to do is, first off, Anthony, just give a brief history of who you are, uh, what you do, kind of your business background and such. Okay. Uh, my name is Anthony Alagona. I'm 44 years old. I am a uh, sales trainer that focuses on business development, um, relationship sales, phone sales, and motivational coaching and speaking. Um, I spent about 20 years in hospitality before I came over into the automotive industry. Um, and that's where I really picked up most of my, uh, most of my talent, I would say, uh, is in the hospitality world, dealing with people on an everyday basis. Um, gave me a good foundation to, uh, jump into the automotive industry. So what is it that you're doing right now in the automotive industry? So right now I focus, 90% um, of my focus is on building and training business development centers uh, for automotive dealerships. So basically uh, I'm the guy that um, helps you find your customer, talk to your customer, get your customer to come in, over deliver on the customer experience and have them continue the relationship after they buy. Um, I focus on taking those leads, which are names, numbers, and email addresses, and creating a relationship and turning them into foot traffic for your dealership. Fantastic. So you're in a bunch of different businesses. You're in a bunch of different automotive dealerships uh, all over the country. Mm -hmm. Yes. And prior to that, the thing I find unique is you were in the hospitality industry. What specifically did you do in hospitality prior to this? Um, well, I, I, I kind of did it all. Um, I started in 1993 after I came out of the Army. Um, I, I worked, my first job was in uh, Macaroni Grill, believe it or not. Um, I started off as a busboy, became a server, um, fell in love with the industry, fell in love with the quick money. Um, I did bartending, serving, general managing. Um, I cooked for a slight uh, short period of time um, and then really found out the front of, front of the house was my passion dealing with people. So I, I've actually worked in every aspect. I've worked in clubs, I've worked in hotels, um, I've worked in little dive bars, I've worked in uh, upscale restaurants, fine dining. Um, I basically did it all for about 20 years until I, until I um, decided to change my career path. So that's gotta be a solid background then for you know hospitality in general, moving into the auto industry, especially with some of the uh, kind of the stigmas and the persona of people in, in automotive, automotive salespeople, men and women. Would, would you agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, I really, I really I'm found sorry, my passion ahead. for people. I'm sorry, my fault. No, um, I you found my passion. I found my passion for people in the, uh, in the hospitality business. All right. So if there was one thing that you would say you are known for, if there was one single item that people said, you know what, that is Anthony Alagona, what would you say that is? Uh, in my opinion, I'd say a positive energy. Um, I, I, I really try to stay consistent with my, with, with my positive energy. I, I always believe in looking on the positive side of things. I believe that happiness is happiness and success are just both choices and mindsets. Um, you know, all people have feelings, um, whether you're happy, sad, anxiety, mad, whatever it may be, they're all temporary feelings. And most of the time humans are conditioned to hold on to the negative ones. So, I just make it a point to uh, focus on the positive and make it a choice to be happy and successful. Man, I would agree with that. You you're definitely you have a great smile and you always have a positive energy on. So, thank you, my friend. 
Absolutely. So as you're venturing to all these different dealerships and all these different uh, areas, you know, dining and hotels and, and, and all of these different businesses that you've been in all over the United States, what three characteristics have you picked up on? Because you see the interaction from the front line and you see the interaction yeah. from middle management, upper management, you know, ownership. What three characteristics would you say are the biggest key that defines somebody as a leader? Not not necessarily by title, but that defines someone as a as a leader, as that that role. Um, first, I would say you have to be selfless. Um, you'd have to stop thinking about yourself and invest in a lot of other uh, invest in others. Um, I spend a lot of my time investing in other people. Um, just I think I did that because of the the way I grew up and um, some of the hardships I faced um, in my in my uh, after making some bad decisions. I decided to when I had nothing to invest everything I had to other people because I really enjoy helping people. So I think being selfless is number one. Um, accountability, uh, number two, holding yourself accountable and, and creating the right habits. You have to have the right habits in life in, in order to be effective in anything that you want to do. So those would be the three qualities I'd be looking for. Somebody with good habits, somebody that's selfless, and somebody that's going to hold himself accountable. Those are good, man. Those are really good. Selfless accountability and, and good habits. So uh, a couple of things that I've heard, right, is – uh, you know, when it when it comes to l l let's say it this way, when it comes to leadership from the front, because you're mostly right now dealing or working with people that are on that front line, aren't you? Yes. Yes. OK, so uh, if you're working with the people that are on the, the front line in right now in automotive dealerships, what would you say are there? Uh, I'll, I'll ask a two part question. What are two things that they really say they need that they like about their leadership? And I know this is mm -hmm. off script, man. I told you it's just going to be a conversation. No, I get it. No, I get it. <laughs> what are two things that they, they really like and that they need from their leadership? And what are two things that are major frustrations that you see, you know, not just in one store, but that, that you see through your travels and such? Well, I think number one is in, in the automotive industries, what they really like is that they can make as much money as they can earn. Um, there's no really ceiling. And I find that the, when I get brought in for training, that they really do appreciate um, the dealership investing in them. So I, I think that the two things that they enjoy about it is the ability to make as much money as possible, um, especially for the hungry ones. And then the, uh, for to have somebody else invest in you because – you know, not not everybody gets invested in by by their company and to bring in trainers to help you just be more effective in what you do and make more money is uh, something that everybody should be grateful for. No, absolutely. That's I think those are are both really strong. So uh, as far as, as well. what's that? Yeah, the frustrations. Yeah, yes. Frustrations, I think, would be um, management not leading from the front. Um, not leading by example. Um, I always tell dealerships, business development shouldn't be a department. It's a mindset, right? Um, everybody, it's everybody's job to develop business. So, you know, the business development centers are usually tucked in the side room with no windows and kind of treated like a redheaded stepchild when they have one of the hardest jobs in the industry is getting people to actually come to your dealership. So I'd say leadership, you know, leading by example and working within the BDC and, and, leading by example. And then the other thing would be accountability to use the CRM. That's probably the biggest thing I see in the automotive industry is that most dealerships, staffs don't effectively use the CRM tool. And that, that is the most important tool in the dealership because, you know, number one, that's where you, you know, you keep track of all your prospects in the buying cycle and the conversations that you've had and you pay good money for it. So uh, just, just, I think those would be the two things. So what, I think those are really good. So leading by example, what would you say is, when, when you're talking about leading by example, are you, you have more people leading? I, I mean, this is kind of an old school thought, but you've heard yeah. this said. You've been in, in business for some time where you lead by walking around, right? So, yeah. mm -hmm. so would you say that that's not happening in a, in a lot of instances? Absolutely. I would say it's not happening. I would say okay. it's not happening. It's it, 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 you know, it's uh, it just depends on the store. It depends on the culture. I mean, you could see uh, we we see 
dealerships online that we know that have fantastic cultures that display their culture on social media with all the positivity and the training. And oh, then there's absolutely. some stores that I walk, and there's some stores I walk in right now and then you, you can hear a pin drop and you know, the, just the, the energy is not there and, and, and you know, you're going to be up for a challenge sometimes. And then you, the other one that you said, the other frustration was the accountability to the CRM. I'm taking notes over yeah. here, believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so so the accountability in the CRM, and that is, that's definitely your area, your specialty. What, what would you do to create more accountability, not just in the CRM, but from, uh, you know, from a, a top-down kind of leadership view, what, what are a couple of things you would recommend to do for people that are either moving into management or that have been in management and maybe gotten a little bit stale? What would you recommend that people do to create more accountability in general? And you could base it just on the CRM, certainly, but in general, accountability is kind of accountability. If people are going to hold themselves accountable in one area in, in, you know, if you get them to hold themselves accountable for the CRM, they're going to hold themselves accountable in other areas too. I agree. I agree. And then, and you know, I, I tell, I tell dealers that, you know, the dealership is almost like a football team You know, a football team has an offense, a defense and special teams. And the dealership's kind of the same way. They have a, they have a, you know, a BDC, a business development center, they have a sales staff and then they have a finance team. Um, and if all teams aren't clicking on, on the right cylinder and working together, we're, we're, we're not going to get to where we need to go as far as goals. So what I see in most dealerships is that most sales staffs do not like to utilize the CRM tool, you know, not necessarily just utilize, but utilize it effectively, keeping all the notes in there. You know, the business development spends a lot of time working inside the virtual showroom, getting people to come into your dealership. And we paint a certain picture of what's going to happen when they get there. So when Mr. Johnson gets there, it's in the best interest of the sales professional, the business development representative and the dealership itself that all the notes go into the CRM tool about what's going on with that particular prospect at any given time. Um, number one, we pay good money for the CRM. Number two, we pay good money for the leads that we put inside the CRM. Now, would we want to make sure that we have all the proper notes and know exactly what's going on with that customer anytime we want to know within the buying cycle? Um, and most of the time, you know, appointments will show up and if the deal doesn't get closed, sometimes you know, the salesperson won't even log that they showed up. Most of the time they'll duplicate the lead. Um, they'll enter the lead in twice. So there's no really, um, there's really no supervision. They don't inspect what they expect and they don't hold accountability. And I, I, I forget who I heard it from, but um, it was a good line in, uh, when I was inside of a dealership and they said, you know, you got to make it a requirement and not a request. And, you know, the, I I, I've, seen one of my dealers, I've seen one of my dealers walk outside with his entire sales staff and look up at his sign and say, yes, that is my, that is my name on the sign. And from now on, you're going to use a CRM tool because number two things are going to happen. Number one, if you don't use it, the deal never happened. You don't get your commission. And that's either going to cause one or two things. The sales professional will quit. Matter of fact, they're not a professional because they're not using a CRM. The salesperson will quit or they're going to fix their habit and they're going to use it from now on and never lose a commission again. You know, we just got to inspect what we expect and you got to hold accountability and have repercussions. But, you know, okay, it starts from the top down and it, it, it's, it's, it's a culture. Simple answers, but straightforward, and I think right on the money. So as we're, we're kind of winding down, I try and keep these to 15, 20 minutes. I've heard this question asked, and I ask every guest this because I like this question. And you've heard it asked before. There's lots of people on podcasts and video and, and all kinds of other um, different areas. And they say, hey, if you, Anthony, if you could go back in time, right, and tell yourself something. And I don't like that question because we can't go back in time. Like you said, you're in your 40s. I'm in my 40s. We're past that <laughs> point, man. So if you could, rather than go back in time to your teenage self, if you could give some really good tips and some good information to someone that's coming up, you know, we have lots of, of the millennials. And now, for goodness sake, in my store, we have iGen right? It's Generation Z is the yeah. iGen. That's now they're past millennials. Absolutely. They're now entering the workforce. So if you could give advice to, uh, you know, people that are in that demographic or, you know, Gen X, that, that's our generation. If you could give advice to someone else that is coming up in the business, coming into a leadership role to take from today forward, you know, because going back in yeah. time, we all know what the answers would be. We all give the 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 oh let me give you the perfect answer but going forward to today what would you tell somebody else that's coming up in management or leadership look these two things if you execute on these here's what i can see in the future for you and and throw a little vision their way what what couple things would you advise them 
Well, there's two things, that, there's two quotes that I live by in life. Um, you know, the first quote I live by is, if you want the things that most people don't have in life, you have to do the things most people aren't willing to do. Uh, that was ingrained in me about uh, seven years ago when I got into the business by a friend of mine. Um, and uh, I just, I lived it ever since. I bought into the concept and, and I haven't looked back. The second habit um, that I, the second quote that I live by is, you have to consciously create your habits because your habits unconsciously create your reality. So number one, I would live by those quotes. Um, there's, there's three things I do in the morning, every single morning to get myself into the right mindset. You know, I'm a human being. I have bad days. Me and my wife fight sometimes. And, um, you know, I'm not always in the best of moods. But w when I go to work, it's my job to be in a good mood because I have to bring out the good energy and I have to get people to perform and, and get results. So one of the things I do is I watch a motivational video within 10 minutes of waking up. Then I watch something funny to proactively look for my first smile. Those are great. And then I watch something to teach myself something. I got to educate myself every day. I live by the dime concept. You know, you know, you know, you gotta have dedication. You gotta have inspiration. Um, you gotta have motivation and you gotta continue your education because, you know, motivation is going to get you started. Inspirate, you know, find inspiration. So it keeps you going. The dedication holds you accountable and the education is going to hone your skills. So you have to do, you know, it's, it's not what you do once in a while. It's what you do every day. that's going to uh, define you and know that happiness and success are just both choices and mindsets. Um, and, and, and just be, look through the, look through the proactive lens. You know, we, we all look through different lenses of life and, um, I didn't always look through the lens I look through now. And, and once I changed my lens and I, I, I stepped outside of myself, I was able to, uh, see my goals and, and tell myself, you know, the only person that's going to stop me from reaching my goals is me. So if you're just coming up right now, make sure you make sure you have the right habits, surround yourself with the right people, hone your skills. If you want to make a lot of money in life, become the master of your craft and then teach other people how to do it because not many people are master their craft. Not many people go home and practice their jobs every single day. But I promise you, if you hone your craft every single day, you live one day at a time. And if you wake up tomorrow, you do the same thing. I promise you over time, you'll become successful, right? Always be, people are always looking to try to find their passion. Don't look to find your passion. Look to work with your, work with passion. If you work with passion, it will reveal itself eventually. Man, that is awesome. I, and that you know that was going to be one of my my next questions is finding your passion. So you beat me yeah. to it, man. Hey, I appreciate it. So as we're uh, as we're kind of winding down here, real quickly, because you do in store BDC uh, sale and sales training, and yep. uh, so how and I, mostly automotive people tune into this show. So how can people yeah. get in contact with you? How can they how can they reach out to you? Well, my phone number, my cell phone number is 732-456-0753. I leave that open to everybody. You know, I just, I give free advice. If you want a strategy call, I'll jump on the call with you. Um, my email is alagona812 at gmail. You can find me at anthonyalagona.com or Anthony Alagona on Facebook. Um, you know, reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to help you. I do a lot of free stuff from, for peoples and dealership. Um, I just like to help people. I, I believe if you help people, the good karma is going to come back around. So. Mike, I appreciate you taking the time out and inviting me on your show. I've been a big fan of yours since the day I met you, and I, I wish you nothing but success and happiness, my friend. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And thank you uh, for, for those of you that watched at the very beginning. Thank you, Anthony, for running the experiment with me. I think I got it nailed down. So we'll have to do this again, and, I'll, and it'll be awesome because yes, we'll have all the, you know, I'll have all the graphics and, and all the cool uh, different fades and that kind of stuff. We'll, we'll get it nailed down. Absolutely. So, so we'll, we'll talk again. I appreciate it. So you have a good day, Mike. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Now for everybody that did take the time to join us this afternoon on this live leadership lesson with Anthony Alagona, thank you so much. Truly appreciate it. Remember you can tune in every single Wednesday afternoon or evening, depending on where you're at evening, 705 Eastern 505 mountain time where I'm at. And you can check out other episodes of The Front at leadtheteam.tv. Please subscribe. Make sure you hit the little bell notification icon there so you get notified when new episodes get uploaded or we're going live, uh, whether it's an experiment or it's all laid out. We want you to join us. So thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.